What's up guys and welcome. I'm reporting to you from my hotel room today because I am in Austin, Texas. I was invited by AMD to come and participate in their launch event for the Ryzen 7000 series of processors and their new AM5 platform. You might have caught the live stream that just ended with Dr. Lisa Su, but whether you watch that or not, I'm going to do a short summary of all the important details from that, starting with the official launch date for these new processors. It's September 27th, and also, here are the prices. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by Kyoxia's family of NVMe SSDs, featuring their latest Bix 3D flash memory. The BG5 now supports PCIe 4.0 and is still available in the incredibly small M.2 2230 form factor, so it's a great fit for gaming PCs, laptops, and compatible handheld gaming devices. And for enterprise or hyperscale data center use, the CD7 and XD6 feature the new EDSFF or Enterprise and Data Center Standard form factor for ease of integration, while the CD7 supports PCIe Gen 5 for maximum performance when paired with the latest AMD Epic or Intel Xeon server hardware. For more on Kyoxia SSDs, click the sponsor link in the video description. So I'm going to be referencing my notes a lot because I have a limited amount of time to produce this video. But again, right from the top, the launch date for Ryzen 7000 series processors, the time you can buy them is September 27th, and the prices are now live too. So I'm going to run down the stack of four processors that are launching, give you their prices and their basic feeds and speeds. Starting with the Ryzen 5 7600X, which is going to be 290 $99 MSRP. That's the six core 12 thread processor. Goes up to 5.3 gigahertz boost, has 38 megabytes of shared cache and a 105 watt TDP. Then there's the Ryzen 7 7700X, the eight core 16 thread one. That one's going to be 400 bucks or 399. Up to 5.4 gigahertz boost here, 40 megs of shared cache and a 105 watt TDP again. From there, we jump up to the chips with two CCDs and more cores and threads. The Ryzen 9 7900X is going to be $549 MSRP. That has 12 cores, 24 threads, up to 5.6 gigahertz boost clock, 76 megs of shared cache, and a 170 watt TDP. And finally, we've got the big boy, the Ryzen 9 7950X, dubbed as the fastest CPU in the world by AMD. 699 US dollars for this one, and that's actually a little bit less than was predicted by some of the early leaks, and even less than the MSRP of like the 3950X or the 5950X, for example. This is the 16 core, 32 thread flagship, all the way up to 5.7 gigahertz boost clock, 80 megs of shared cache and a 170 watt TDP and AMD says this CPU will give you 15% more gaming performance versus the previous generation 5950X which is a pretty big boost in and of itself. Now all these chips are based on Zen 4 so they're the first 5 nanometer desktop processors using the brand new architecture and apart from the one or two CCDs that you'll see in this image that have all the cores there is a companion IO die that's actually built on the 6 nanometer process that has integrated AMD RDNA 2 graphics and that also has the DDR5 memory controller and the PCIe 5.0 controller. So do bear in mind, you will need DDR5 memory if you want to get in on this platform. DDR5 memory can still be more expensive, so that's something that you'll want to take into consideration if you're actually planning out a build. Also note that these new CPUs have integrated graphics, RDNA 2 graphics, although AMD said these are more like functional graphics to provide you video out for basic web browsing and that kind of thing. And they're not gonna have as much performance as the integrated graphics on like AMD's previous APUs, for example. It's mostly there to provide you a video out, a little bit more functionality in case you don't have a graphics card. As for the Zen 4 architecture that's debuting here, AMD says that they have exceeded their performance goals with this new CPU architecture. They were estimating getting about an eight to 10% IPC uplift with the new design, but now that they've optimized it, they say they've actually bumped that number up to 13% gain. And when you combine that with the frequency improvements, because remember like the 7950X is going all the way up to 5.7 gigahertz now, that's an 800 megahertz increase over the 5000 series. Combine those two together and you get 29% single thread performance gains with this new lineup of CPUs. You should remember that all these performance numbers are directly from AMD, so take them with a little bit of a grain of salt and hold out for independent reviews to verify that these numbers are accurate, but if you're wondering how they get to that number, 13% IPC improvement, it's actually the geo mean of about 22 games and apps that they tested with the previous generation and the new generation both clocked to 4 gigahertz. They also added AVX 512 support, and they did show off their CPU roadmap once again, which has been shown before, but they confirmed that the Zen 4C variants of these chips, which are basically like the same performance, but in half of the die area, will be coming in the first half of 2023, and that Zen 5 is still on track whatever that means. 
As for the new AM5 platform, we have some good news there. AMD started off by saying that this platform is going to scale into the future, and then they followed that up with what I hoped they would, which was a follow-up to the promise they made with AM4 back when it launched in September 2016, that it would have a long lifespan. They promised support up through 2020, they actually had new chips coming out even this year in 2022. And with AM5, they've committed to that once again and made a promise to maintain a stable platform through 2025 plus. So maybe even beyond that, like they did with AM4. Now for AM5, there's some stuff that we already knew, like there's a new socket, LGA1718. And while you will need a new motherboard, one of the new 7000 series CPUs and DDR5 memory, they are maintaining backwards compatibility with AM4 coolers. So you could carry your old cooler over to a new build if you wanted to. The platform has native support for CPUs with up to 170 watt TDPs, and they also said now that they've expanded that to up to 230 watt TDPs, so we might see some extreme overclocking or different variations of the chips in the future, or again, maybe just headroom for those extreme overclockers out there. Again, you've got PCIe 5.0 support with up to 24 lanes from the CPU, and then there's actually going to be four different chipsets uh, that will determine motherboard connectivity. We already knew about X670E or X670 Extreme. That will give you PCIe 5.0 support for one or two graphics cards in by 16 or by 8 and by 8 with PCIe 5.0. And you'll also have a PCIe 5.0 M.2 slot. With X670 Non-Extreme, you'll have PCIe 5.0 support for one storage slot and then optional graphics support for PCIe 5.0 slot there, and that will depend on the motherboard manufacturer. We have a newly revealed B650E or B650 Extreme chipset, and that will provide a little bit more flexibility for motherboard manufacturers. It will mostly be PCIe 4.0 connectivity with one M.2 slot and the option to add a PCIe Gen 5 slot for graphics card. And then there's B650, which will provide you PCIe 5.0 for one storage slot. And then there might be B650 motherboards that are just PCIe 4.0 across the board. That's probably where you're gonna see the least expensive motherboard and AMD says that they'll be starting at $125 with the X series of motherboards available in September along with the CPUs and the B series motherboards available sooner than I was expecting in October. Along with DDR5 support comes AMD Expo, newly introduced extended profiles for overclocking. So if you're familiar with Intel's XMP, this is kind of like AMD's version of that. It's one-click overclocking. They promised 15 Expo compatible kits that will be available at launch going up to DDR5, 6400 speed, and yes, if you have a kit that just has XMP profiles, they will still support that too. They just said Expo kits might be tuned a little bit better for the Ryzen 7000 platform. AMD did show off some performance data, but we weren't allowed to film it at the time. That said, they did a V-Ray demo, which is ray tracing, basically comparing the 7950X to the 12900K. The 7950X scored 30,120, 12900K scored 18,646. That's 62% more performance, and they also said that's at 47% better performance per watt. Again, these are AMD's numbers, so bear that in mind. They did single-thread performance testing with Geekbench, which isn't always the benchmark that I see you used for single thread performance. That said, all four new CPUs have faster single thread performance versus the 12900K in this test, so that's somewhat impressive. In terms of gaming, they actually pit the lowest end 7600X against Intel's current flagship 12900K in F1 2022. Frame rates for the Intel system were in the 300 plus range, and frame rates for the AMD system were getting well into the 400s. AMD said the cumulative results for that benchmark was 11% faster performance for the 7600X, and again, that's compared to the 12900K. AMD said the 7600X is 5% faster than the 12900K for gaming on average. Of course, these events don't usually end without Dr. Lisa Su slipping in just one more thing, and that was a tease from the Radeon side for graphics cards. They said the new RDNA 3 architecture is looking good. It's providing more than 50% improved performance per watt versus the current generation Radeon 6000 series cards. Not too much beyond that, but we are expecting Radeon GPUs with RDNA 3 architecture to launch later in the year. And that was pretty much everything. It was a bit of a whirlwind, but my initial impression is pretty positive. We've been looking forward to this platform for quite some time. I'm very happy that they once again made that long-term commitment saying that AM5 is going to be their standard through 2025 at least. In terms of pricing, yes, they could be a little bit cheaper potentially, possibly, but if you look at the Ryzen 5000 series CPU pricing, it's pretty much in line with that and even a little bit cheaper if you look at the 7950X. I guess the only thing they didn't clarify was uh, for their new tagline that they're going with together we advance underscore PCs 
Do you pronounce the underscore? It's still a mystery to me. I'll see if I can still do some hardcore investigative journalism while I'm still here and figure that information out for you guys. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think about all of this verified information direct from AMD about the new platform. Will you be immediately diving in to build a new system based on it? Will you be taking advantage maybe of fire sales or discounted used parts being sold off from the previous generations? If you have any feedback for me, I'd love to hear it. In the meantime, you can also check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy merchandise, shirts, mugs, t-shirts, and more. You could also hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. You could also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you wanna see more content like this coming at you real soon because I will likely be testing these processors once they're available for testing, but I probably shouldn't say any more than that for now. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.